And I'm going to start reading here in verse number 22. James chapter 1 and verse 22. He says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Therefore, if any, be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth away, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So when we read here in Hebrews that we need to put take a, a earnest heed to the things which we have heard. That essentially is telling us the same thing that James is telling us here in chapter 1, in that we have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. In other words, we have to put it into practice. If we just hear the word and we don't do the word, or if we just hear the word and we don't take heed to the things of the word, we're deceiving ourselves. And we're going to start drifting from the word because we don't know what it says. We have to be a doer of the word, my friends, and not just a hearer only. We have to put God's word into practice. We have to start applying God's word. That's going to be the way that we can grow spiritually and we can start developing spiritually so that we can become the people that God wants us to be so that we don't miss out on our inheritance so that we don't miss out on the promised land like that generation did in, of, of Israel and they also as readers on a backward slide they were drifting from the word but we read in chapter 3 that they were also doubting the word look at Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 12 he says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. They were doubting the word. They had that evil heart. Talking about the, the Israel, the nation of Israel, as they were going to the promised land, they suffered from a, a unbelieving heart. And, and I just can't grasp myself how they could have done that. I mean, think about that. Think of the things that they had seen. The things that they had heard. The miracles that they had seen done. And they failed to believe God's promises. But then I think, how many things have I seen? How many ways have I seen God work in my life? And failed to believe it was him or failed to trust him in other spots. And it's such a sad, sad thing. We can't never doubt the promises of God. The promises that God made are promises that God's going to keep. God doesn't, doesn't go back on his promises. God doesn't change his promises. God doesn't change his word. Problem is we fail to truly trust in him. The first step, if you will, in the fall of, of spiritual immaturity is dullness toward the word. Look at verse number 12. He says, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teacheth you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. He's saying that at a time that you all ought to be teachers, apparently this Hebrew church and these people that he was writing to have been Christians for, for a while. They've had their faith in God for a while before these false teachings and, and things started started creeping back into the church there. And he's, he's telling them, you, you should be mature enough that you are teaching others the things of God and the principles of God. But instead, says you need to be taught. 
you need to be taught the first principles of the oracles of God. In other words, they need to lay the foundation of their faith over again and over and over and over again. They should be teachers, but they're not. <coughs> Excuse me. Milk here refers to the first principles. And the first principles are things that Jesus did on earth. His ministry, his miracles, his teachings, his death, his resurrection. Those are the things that... that makes up the basis of our faith. And those are the things that that make up the beginning of our faith so that we understand who Jesus is. He says here in verse 12, And are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Strong meat here is the teachings about our Lord's ministry now as our high priest. The things he was talking about here at the beginning of chapter number 5. He says, I want to teach you these strong, these, these in-depth teachings. I want to teach you more about Jesus and his ministry. But I can't because we've got to keep laying the foundations. Now make no mistake, my friends, here. There is tons to learn about what Jesus did here on earth. In fact, if you go back to the Gospel of John with me. John chapter 20. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20. It's verses 30 and 31. Scripture says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. These things are written so that we can have life through Jesus' name, so that we can believe and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Then if you jump over to the last verse, John chapter 21 and verse number 25, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Friends, there is so much that we need to learn and we can learn about what Jesus did in his ministry here on earth. And I'm not telling you that you should never study those things. But what I am telling you is that you gotta, you got to grow spiritually. When you're studying and you're reading about the miracles that Jesus did, the teachings that he did, the things that he's done, the things that he did here on earth. That's laying down a foundation, a basis of your faith. And we're going to be able to see the way that God works. And we're going to be able to see the way that, that, that God intends for us to live. And then we're going to be able to start growing in that. we got to start growing spiritually. we got to start growing to become the person that God wants us to be. Spiritual immaturity. The marks of spiritual immaturity are a dullness toward the word. The marks of spiritual immaturity is a baby food diet. That's what I called that. A baby food diet where we're just drinking the milk and we're not eating the meat. You know, a baby, a newborn baby, you're not going to feed it a T-bone steak dinner. But you're going to feed it that milk. But a baby don't stay a baby its whole life. And a Christian shouldn't stay a baby Christian his whole life or her whole life. Verses 13 and 14 here of Hebrews chapter 5. It says, For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We must learn to use the word in our day-to-day -day life. we got to learn to, to apply God's word to each and every part of our life. Whether you start your day out reading the word of God or whether you end your day reading and studying your Bible, the important thing is that you apply what you've read, that you apply what God's word tells us to apply. 
Listen to this illustration I want to use here as we wrap it up tonight. The story is told that this man once heard a preacher friend say that most Christians are betweeners. What do you mean by that? asked his friend. Well, they are between Egypt and Canaan, out of the place of danger, but not yet into the place of rest and rich inheritance, he replied. They are between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, saved by the blood of by the blood, but not yet enjoying the newness of the resurrection life. Are you a betweener today? Are you kind of stagnant? Are you growing in the way that he wants you to grow? Or are you just looking into God's word, hearing God's word, and walking away unchanged like it means nothing? I don't know where you are, but I hope and pray that you're growing spiritually, that you're growing and becoming the person that God wants you to be. And next week we're going to talk a little bit more about growth as we look in Hebrews chapter 6. So I encourage you to take a look here at Hebrews chapter 6 sometime before next Tuesday. But uh, anyway, for now, where are you? Are you spiritually stagnant or are you spiritually growing? Have you given your life to Jesus? Father, I just thank you for this word, God. And Father, I just pray that your spirit move in our midst now, Lord, that you... That you convict us where we need convicting, God. That you show us where we're stagnant, where we're not growing. So that we can get rid of that and start growing into the person you want us to be. Father, maybe there's somebody here tonight, Lord, that has never accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that you give them the courage to confess their sins. And proclaim Jesus as Lord. As your word says, that if you confess your sins, that you are faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, maybe there's somebody that's on that backward spiral. That's starting to grow dull in hearing your word. It's starting to doubt what the word says and what the word promises. I pray that you convict them and draw them back into that relationship before it's too late. And Father, maybe there's somebody tonight that's right in the center of your will, living and doing the things that you want them to do and growing in the way you want them to grow. I pray that you give them the strength and the courage to stay right there and continue growing their faith. Father, I pray that you help us to exercise our spiritual senses, Lord, so that we can become strong and growing in you. I ask that your protection go with us now, Lord, and you bring us back at your next appointed time. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this week in Talking Scripture. Don't forget, we will not have our regular broadcast on Tuesday night. This is it for the week. And uh, I encourage you, if you have not liked our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash scripture links, I encourage you to go and do so, because starting Monday, one week from tonight, and right about this time at 6.30 p.m., uh, we're going to be starting a Facebook prayer group. And it's just going to be a short time where we get together, we pray for one another, we pray for our nation. Um, I'll give a short, and I do mean short, a uh, little look at, at prayer, a little Bible study. And um, it'll just be a time that we start praying one for another and for our nation. And I encourage you to go to facebook.com forward slash scripture links, like our page, because that's going to be the only way that you can get there. And uh, don't forget to check out Scripture Links Daily Dose of Inspiration live each morning uh, around 4 in the morning. Tomorrow's probably going to be a little later. But um, Monday through Friday, with the exception of holidays, a great way to get your day started off right. And then join me back here again next Tuesday night as we once again get into God's Word. Friends, have a great week. Remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. And then share that Word with someone today. Have a blessed week. Thanks for listening to Talkin' Scripture. Check out our website, www.scripturelinks.com.